Hello, my name is Dr. Peter Shaw, and I am the Senior Director for Medical Education at Bioventus. Today, we're going to demonstrate an intra-articular knee injection using the arthrocentesis knee model. Positioning the patient is really important to ensure maximum comfort, and also it'll depend on the route of injection you are going to use. In the first instance, we're going to demonstrate with the patient sitting on the edge of the examination table, and that will be for the inferior routes of injection. Let's start by identifying the anatomical features of the knee, and then I'll talk about the six possible ways of doing this injection. So we identify the patella and the patella tendon, and then either side of the patella tendon, you can feel the joint line. Of the six routes you can possibly use, there's the suprolateral route, supramedial route, medial mid patella, lateral mid patella, and then the inferomedial and infralateral routes. Typically when the patient is sitting like this, you would be doing the inferomedial or infralateral routes. And this would be used in a larger patient where it's very difficult to do one of the upper routes. So to do that, we identify the patella tendon, the joint line, and then we can mark either side of it where we could do that injection. The really important thing here is to avoid a fat pad called Hoffer's fat pad, which lies directly behind the patella tendon here. So when injecting, you don't want to go inwards on either side. It has to be straight back and then you will miss that fat pad. Avoiding the fat pad is really important because it is full of nerve endings. And if you inject into it, then the patient will have side effects relating to that. The second position we're going to demonstrate is with the patient in a supine position. Typically, we would roll up a towel to support the knee so that the quadriceps are nice and relaxed and it's easier to identify the landmarks necessary for the supralateral route of injection. In order to do that, we identify the patella and if you sublux it laterally and then if you draw a line across the top of the patella, and then up the lateral aspect of the patella. And where those two lines meet, you just make a little mark, and that is the place that you will be doing the injection. We're now gonna demonstrate the knee injection technique using the Simulab knee. The great thing about this knee model is that it is anatomically correct with the bones, the fibula, the tibia, the patella, and even the femoral head. And it can be done using ultrasound. Firstly, we're going to demonstrate, with the patient sitting on the edge of the examination table, the inferolateral route and the inferomedial route of injection. So again, we identify the patella and the patella tendon and the joint line on either side of that. And then we mark our position for the inferomedial route, insert the needle, and we're going to draw back fluid from the knee joint. For the infralateral route, we do the same. Identify the patella, patella tendon, the joint line. Mark our position for the needle and then introduce the needle into the joint and draw back to make sure that we're in the joint space before we do the injection. Now we are going to demonstrate the suprolateral route and the lateral mid patella route of injection with the patient in a supine position with the knee supported with a rolled up towel. For the lateral mid patella, again, we identify the patella and on the lateral aspect, halfway down, inject there. In a larger patient, it will probably be impossible to do these injections using a landmark guided approach, and you would do one of the medial or inferior routes that we demonstrated earlier. With ultrasound, it would be different because you know you are in the joint. We're going to demonstrate the suprolateral route of injection. Again, we identify the landmarks. So we identify the patella and the patella tendon. And then subluxing the patella, which you can do with this model, draw a line across the top of the patella 
and then up on the lateral aspect of the patella. And where those two lines meet is the position you are going to do the injection. When injecting Duralane, you would keep the needle in the joint space, detach the arthrocentesis syringe, and attach the Duralane syringe. Duralane, due to its viscosity, should be injected as a slow push, as opposed to a bolus. That way, should you come across any resistance, such as a synovial fold, you can reposition the needle slightly and continue to inject. Of course, if you were doing this in a real patient, you would require all of the supplies needed for a proper aseptic technique, which might include alcohol swabs and betadine, non-sterile gloves, ethyl chloride spray for freezing the skin, needles for aspiration and injection, 20 ml syringe for removing any effusion, 5 ml syringe should you use lidocaine, 3 ml duralane syringe, gauze and band-aids. Thank you for letting us share this technique with you today. For more information and resources, please refer to duralane.com.